Welcome to Mod My Toyota Sienna. That's right, everybody. We are gonna try to make this minivan just a little bit cooler. As much as many of us don't wanna admit, we are getting to the age where, you know, families are growing, we need more space in our vehicles, and the answer really is not an SUV, people. It is the minivan. I am a big proponent of minivans. I love them. I know they're not super cool. You know, they're, they're soccer mom vehicles to a certain extent, but I think the SUV has taken over that soccer mom status. And really the minivan uh, is bigger than an SUV. It has more cargo space than a pickup truck even. It's got so much room inside. And look, it's got a button that you can hit to open the door and it slides open, come on. Is that cool? Yes, yes I think it is, but from a practicality standpoint, it has so much utility and really the, the biggest downside is, well, you know, they just don't look super cool. Like look at these wheels, people. These are hubcaps. This is a 2022 limited edition. It's almost top of the line Toyota Sienna hybrid, all wheel drive model, and it has hubcaps, which is kind of crazy to think. So what we're gonna do today is make this thing a little bit cooler. And I'm sure some of you may know, we're gonna start off by lowering this thing. So let's get this up on the hoist and get to work.
There it is, Megan Racing coilover is installed. Thanks to VHC Performance for getting these to us very quickly. I didn't even, there was a bunch of manufacturers out there that make uh, coilovers for this car. I decided on the Megan Racing ones because A, Varun's an awesome guy and he can get it to me quick. They had it in stock. But B, these actually use the factory top hats where a lot of the other coilovers that I saw on the market have like the pillow ball mounts and I just don't think those are gonna be compliant enough on the street. It's gonna give your Sienna a harsh ride. And uh, boy, oh boy, was it a lot of work there, DP. We had to take out like the entire wiper assembly. There's this whole panel underneath just to get those to those three bolts. Um, however, uh, we may have made a mistake in the rear. As you guys saw, we did have to like swing this arm down and put the spring in, which wasn't a big deal. Uh, however, I did notice that our adjustment perch here is now down in here, which is gonna make it impossible to access. So I think, I think this is supposed to live up here. So this is setup would be flipped. Um, not a big deal. We're not gonna make any adjustments right now. And uh, you'll find out why we're not keen on making sure that this is fixed uh, in a little bit. But the other cool thing I really wanted to show you is this is an all wheel drive Sienna. And uh, if you come look here, this is what you would think is a differential. However, there is a orange wire, big one right here running to the diff. And that is because this is an electric motor. So the all wheel drive system on this Sienna is actually a separate system from the front. There is no drive shaft. You can see there's a muffler here. It's just an electric motor back here, which I think is super cool, which also has me thinking, what about putting this in a Civic and making it like a case K-swapped all-wheel drive hybrid Civic right. with some batteries in the back, yeah. man. Like this is super cool to see. It's It looks like it's a super compact unit here. Like really, really rad, cool technology. I think we're gonna see a lot more of this kind of stuff being marketed to people as an all-wheel drive car, which really this is, and it just gets the assist when it needs it from the, the rear. But 90% of the time, I'm sure it's front wheel drive. And it also does have a motor up there for that whole hybrid system. Why don't we take a quick break here for this content that's sponsored by Nintendo of Canada. If you're like me and you love racing, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is a fun and accessible way to enjoy the thrills of racing at home or at the shop. Plus, because we all grew up playing Mario Kart, we can get all the nostalgic vibes with the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass, where we can enjoy our favorite tracks from previous games in the Mario Kart franchise on Nintendo Switch. The Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass features six waves, waves one to four having been released to date and the remaining two being due to be released by the end of 2023. Eight courses are released in each wave, including nostalgic favorites like Wii Coconut Mall, N64 Choco Mountain and DS Peach Gardens, all playable on Nintendo Switch for the very first time. The beauty of the Nintendo Switch is we can take a quick break here at the shop from our wrenching on cars and burn off some steam playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. The game has such a unique, lighthearted, and fun-filled environment and play style that we can easily jump on the Nintendo Switch and have some fun. And because the gameplay doesn't require any highly practiced or specialized skills, we can play it with friends or family too for a much more inclusive gaming experience. Now that we've lowered the Sienna, it's time to put on a, a fitting type of wheel and tire, isn't it, to really complete the look. And for that, we have gone with Koenig's Diverge. This is a new offering in their main line of wheels, so this is not a flow-formed wheel but it's still remarkably light. I'm really impressed by how light this wheel and tire package is. And I really like the style of the Diverge, which I'm guessing they went with that name because the spokes diverge and the gloss black finish is a really nice look and it's gonna look great on this silver. In terms of specs, the wheel is a 19 by eight and a half plus 32. And of course we've wrapped them in Continental Tire. And in this case, we've gone with their Extreme Contact DWS uh, 06 plus. So DWS literally means dry, wet, and snow. So this is an all season tire with a 560 tread wear rating. And having used these on my G35 in the previous iteration of this tire, these are remarkably good in the snow. I actually use these as my four season tire on my G35. And in, in, in anything other than like really deep snow or like super sketchy, say icy conditions, these worked really, really well. So further ado, let's bolt these on here and do the big reveal. Show you how sexy this van looks when it's lowered on these things.
so the ride height here you see is right out of the box from Megan Racing. And man, it is perfect in my opinion. It's not too low, especially for around here. This is ideal ride height. This van now looks like it is going fast. And these wheels and tires, DP, they're, they're, they're so good. Like the, the black just contrasts and matches all of the gloss black around this, this van. And I truly think it is now a, a I don't want to call it a sports van, but it certainly looks like it's going fast, especially from the rear. Like when you when you come back here and you look at this line here with this tail light, this to me just like looks pretty aggressive and cool. So I'm digging the way this looks. Um, really now the question is, how does it ride? So let's jump in and go for a test drive. Well, welcome to minivan life. I like it, man. I'm about this, this life. This is luxury, <laughs> this comfort, is. utility, yes. everything DP. At a price tag. Yeah, this is not a cheap van. They're hard to get. It takes like, uh, this van took, uh, spoiler alert, this is not my replacement for the 4Runner. Uh, some of you may have seen I'm selling my 4Runner and uh, I'm not replacing it with this. This is my father-in-law's. No, it's a pretty amazing combination of practicality, utility, space, comfort, and dare I say style. This thing yeah. looks good. Yeah, yeah, It yeah. looks really yeah, good. It looks I'm... good. Like inside, it's pretty awesome. It There's is. just like so much storage space. Yeah. It's it's, uh, it's pretty damn remarkable in the my opinion. The quality of the materials is nice yeah, too. Yeah, like there's yeah. leather on the dash and this fancy like yeah. Japanese mahogany covering in the middle here. Not real wood everywhere, but it looks good. Uh, I'm, I'm into it. DP, feel that power. It's actually pretty snappy. Yeah, it's not bad like for a four cylinder with the, the hybrid system. Yeah. You know, it's it's still a big van. For a four banger, it's a big heavy machine, yeah. but yeah. obviously the torque of those electric motors yeah fill in that gap it's not it's not underwhelming in that sense no and as for the ride height um it's remarkably good it, oh, the ride comfort yeah Sorry. the ride comfort is remarkably that's right. good the, the, yeah the I'm, ride I'm kind of blown away like i've never used megan racing stuff before yeah. but if this is any any indication then wow they know how to it's, street tune a coilover yeah especially a sienna van you know we were talking about it why build coilovers for a Sienna van, but I'm, I'm sure the market is there. The thing that I do notice is a little bit more, see, pogoing. Slightly more porpoising yes. than, than OE, yeah, I like would back imagine. And yeah. Back and forth a yeah. little bit more. Yeah. And I just assume that's because of uh, ride height, right? Maybe, or just the dampers, like the rebound. Yeah, of or, the or dampers spring, is, yeah, spring you know, rates, but it's from... But overall ride quality is very good. Yeah, exactly. Considering the roads that we have here are really, really bad. Mm -hmm. Like I would have no hesitation to drive you know this thing and, and hit some bumps same you can see here here's a big nice little pothole here yeah Look at that doesn't upset like the car at all so now admittedly we still have all like the rubber isolation on the tops and bottoms of the springs like this isn't a hardcore coilover setup by any no and i think stretch. that's the the that's beauty the of it. this yeah. right like going to have those proper oe top Mounts is yeah. huge when yeah. it comes to that front end transfer of, of NVH, yeah. right? Yeah, it's it's really good that way. No, it, it, all in all, this has been a victory. Um, here, let's see this bump here coming oh, in. Yeah, oh, like, yeah, it's very good. It's nice, man. It's like, real nice. If you didn't know this wasn't the stock suspension, I don't know that you'd be you'd be like, oh, this is aftermarket. Yeah, it rides really well. well. That would be the the test is to just give this back to my father. Yeah, see if he notices. And see if he notices yeah. it. Uh, but. We're not going to do that because we have other plans in mind here. And uh, let's just cut to the chase here. Let's show you what we've got. So now that we've lowered the van, it is time to move on to stage two, which is lifting the van, removing the coilovers and lifting it with this kit here, which is a three inch lift kit. You may be wondering why on earth are you guys gonna be lifting this uh, minivan? And that is because, well, my father-in-law does have a cabin out in the woods. And so he's asked me, uh, to l raise this thing up because in the winter time he actually has trouble getting through there with his pickup truck So that would mean this minivan right now wouldn't make it through there And I think with all-wheel drive and a lift kit it will and with a proper set of wheels and tires Which we will show you so it is now time to remove those coilovers and put this in
There it is, our three inch lift is in place. This is from Journeys Off-Road. And I think the, you know, the, the most intimidating part was loading in this spring. You can see this spring is like curved like this right now. There is so much tension and pressure in this that uh, it was a little bit worrisome jacking it up, but we managed to get it in there. Front was a pretty turnkey. And here we have it guys, we are going for that rugged off-road look because what Sienna is complete without a rugged off-road look, especially one that's been lifted three inches. I think this is gonna look really cool actually. These are Motegi Racing MR139s, which of course have like a rally inspired design. Should be a very strong wheel in a 17 by seven and a half plus 40 offset. A Little bit more sunken than the street setup, but I think they'll still look really, really good. And for rubber, of course, we've gone with Continentals and we have gone with a true winter tire. So these are the Viking Contact 7s, which is the same winter tire that Pete and I run on all of our cars and trucks, and they work exceptionally well in the harshest of winter conditions. So they work really well on ice, they work really well in deep snow. These are a true winter tire, and they'll get you through anything, especially if you're in a hybrid all-wheel drive Sienna. So these should work extremely well, and the beauty of, of any Continental tire is that you can buy them with confidence, because not only do they come with a total confidence warranty that includes a money-back guarantee, if you don't like the tires after 60 days, you also get like three years of roadside assistance and a whole bunch of other stuff. So if you jump on their website, have a look at their total confidence package because it's really impressive the amount of coverage that you get. And we're also very confident that you will like these a lot because of all the winter tires we've tried, these are exceptionally, exceptionally good. So let's bolt them on there and see how they look. Man, talk about transformation from a lowered vehicle to this. Uh, it does have off-road vibes. I'm not gonna say we made it 100% off-road ready. I feel like it needs a bash bar. It needs a roof rack. It needs like the uh, the rally sport or whatever. Rally armor. R rally armor, mud flaps. Like those, in hindsight, I should have gotten a couple more things, but I don't know if my father-in-law would like that. He likes his minivan stock. So I think this is going to work though. Um, and we do have a couple more things we want to do to winterize this thing. So the factory floor mats that come with this Sienna, you can see they're not really great for winter. And I find they just have like too many of these, you know, this pattern design, areas like this where you can get overflow, especially in these areas where your, your boots are gonna be. So we are, of course, switching them out for a set of WeatherTech that we picked up from WeatherTech Canada. And you can see these are flow form, the laser design, they fit perfectly, but they have these nice little areas, these pockets here that make it so much nicer to be able to clean them or uh, contain the, the, the salt and then clean them come springtime. You can see the fitment on them is superb. We always love these. I'll show you in the rear here. This setup is, uh, is pretty interesting because it does have these two captain's chairs you can see all the way around here, this is your lining. And again, like these areas here are just gonna trap a ton of salt. You can see salt is gonna spill out this way. So here you are, the liners are in from WeatherTech and you can see they just have better overall coverage down um, the sides here and all that. Arguably one of the most important things that I'm gonna do to this Sienna is get it undercoated properly because this is a brand new car. We do have harsh winters here. That means I wanna make sure this thing is gonna last for my father-in-law. So of course, I've brought it here to Honey Seal and uh, Jake, you just took care of this thing for me. Thank you so much, man. It looks unreal under here. Um, really, Tell people that don't know, what is the difference between this and like a, you know, your, your regular oil-based undercoating? Yeah, for sure, thanks for bringing it in there, Pete. So this, uh, this coating is something that's gonna last you that longevity, right? So this is something that you see uh, about 10 years of, of life in a lot of places, the high wear areas, uh, three to seven years. So a big difference of coming in, uh, you know, once to twice a year at an oil coating. And then the other major thing for us is see-through right so for us on this type of thing where you get that hybrid 
uh, we're able to actually spray on this because you can actually see the orange after. Uh, oh, that's no, interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's the main thing, right? You can't oil coat a hybrid or electrics uh, because of that specifically is that black coating. Oh, so then you okay. Can see this, right? So safety issues, um, other other concerns that oil has with uh, with rubbers and things like that. And you can see with these all the different lines and everything that these vehicles have. And then so anybody that's coming in, if this was blacked out, you know, it just looked like your your average cable. So yeah. We want to be able to see that safety feature, that bright orange. Well, sweet man, thank you once again for uh, for fitting me in. I know this was <laughs> a last minute thing, and I certainly appreciate it. Always for the good guys. It feels like we're on the stock suspension, but we're three inches higher. <laughs> you do feel a little you, elevated you right do. now, don't oh, yeah. you? Especially after being well, in the large I version. kind of feel like I'm driving a, a, a truck almost, yeah, like yeah. a, a it, very luxury truck yeah. of sorts. It's got truck vibes up here for sure. But like, did I lift the, raise the seat up too high? What's going no, on? No, 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 you didn't. But uh, it doesn't feel like it's trying to fall over. No, no. And um, this right here, this is the crack, let's see. Okay, yeah. it took it like a champ. Yeah. I mean, this is now lifted, so it, it floats a it little bit more. It feels softer DP. than the Megan Racing, yeah, as yeah. you would expect. Yeah. See, like, oof. And but the winter tires are, yes. are certainly contributing that. More Although, compliant, more sidewall. I will say, my favorite thing about the Viking Contact 7s is they don't have squirm and like that kind of like softish feeling true. that snow tires yeah. usually do. Like they certainly feel more yeah. of like a performance snow tire. They do, and they don't have the growl that a lot of winter tires mm -hmm. have too. So yeah, as winter tires go, they're very uh, quiet and they ride quite sportily, I think it's fair to say. Although, you know, on something with this much sidewall, there's obviously gonna be some extra squish happening. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, it's not really noticeable, is it? No, it, it really, it's riding really nice. I do have to take this thing for an alignment. I'm sure the camber's a little out of whack, but mm -hmm. it is driving straight. The kit it is. did include those camber bolts it in did. the front though, yeah, so yeah, yeah. at least that was something. Alignment's a good idea though, but it, yeah, it seems to drive Man. nicely, yeah? I, I kind of wish we had an area where we could go off-roading I was going to say, we really right need now. to go off-roading. We where, where can we go? We need an area. Should I just like try to drive through a ditch here? <laughs> These ditches are a bit too deep, I, I, I think. I think they are, yeah. yeah. I did that yeah. on my Jeep once and it didn't end well. I had to call that AAA. Really? Yeah. 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 See, we have like nowhere here where I can cut a corner and destroy somebody's lawn. Yeah, we, we kind of need to find that, don't we? Yeah. <sighs> The problem is we'd have to drive for 20 here, here's minutes. Here's some ditches right okay, here. Yeah, some, yeah, some some potholes here. here. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah there you go. See? Bad. You can smash some railroad tracks up here. Of course. All right, here we go. Catch some air, PT. Oh, oh that was like just, butter. That, that was too anticlimactic. Yeah, it was, we just put oh, it in the oh, dirt geez. here. Look at this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Somebody will think I'm, I might be a bit of a lunatic. Yeah, up, yeah, but yeah. man. Well, DP, I don't think there's there's much to say. This thing floats. It does. It drives really nicely right now. It does. I would say better than the, the coilovers. The ride quality is more compliant, for yes, sure. Yes, yes. This is now like the the Cadillac of Toyota Siennas. Yes, yes. Rather than the, you know, GR86 of Toyota Siennas when we were on the coilovers, right? Yeah, yeah. And for a, a woodsman who's nearing retirement age, this is the ri this is the ride quality you want. This is. And this is the ride height you want. Too, You're right. So. My father-in-law is going to love it. If he smashes into anything, not going to be a big deal. Yeah, yeah. If he plows through some snow, not going to be a big deal. Run so. over a deer or a porcupine, yeah, you yeah, won't yeah. even you notice. Throw a deer in the back. Yeah. Not that he hunts, but uh, you know, maybe. He, he may take it up. Yep, yeah, yeah, if that happens, so. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna call this a success. And yeah, it's not clunking or making any weird noises nope. or doing anything we bad, so. Head back to the shop. There's that's, really nothing else to talk that's about. That's it, it's a lifted van, everybody. <laughs> Quick update for everybody. My father-in-law has been putting the Sienna to good use here. As you can see, it is snowing. This thing has been a beast in the snow and all these types of uh, heavy winter conditions. The Viking Contact 7s have been working amazing, he said. And of course, he did what I wanted to do, and that is add that Thule ski rack up there. Kind of has perfected the look of this thing. Doesn't it look so, so good for this type of like winter condition? It really is a cool van. 
All right, everybody, that is gonna be a wrap on this episode. I hope you enjoyed this quick and easy Toyota Sienna build. Certainly post in the comments, which look is your favorite, the lowered one or the raised one? I know some of you are gonna like the raised one for sure. And of course, if you guys are looking for any of the products featured in this video or any of our videos, certainly check the link in the description. And lastly, if you like the content, certainly think about subscribing and hitting that like button.